today we're building the goats a small outdoor fenced area in order to train them to the electric fence and also to give them a little bit more space. We want the goats to be trained to the electric fence in a confined area, but the great thing about the netting we're using is that you can expand it easily and quickly. So here's my fencing. Premier One Electro Fence Plus. So the first thing we're gonna do here is just untie the black strings. You also have to unclip the this metal connection. Next, we're gonna hold all the posts here. Then we're gonna find our end post. And the end post is the one that has the black strings on it. And we're gonna just kinda toss it over here approximately where it's gonna go. And then one post at a time, we're gonna lay this fence down. So the next step is to set our first post. I'm attaching this first post to the barn. It won't actually touch the wood. So I'm gonna step the bottom of this first post into the soil about two inches away from my supporting two by four in the barn here. And then I'm gonna use these polypropylene pieces of cord I have attached to this board to just secure this just a couple inches from the two by four there. And then you wanna make sure this clip is not contacting the barn. So you can just clip it up onto the fence itself like this to keep it out of the way. I'm gonna run down this line. I'm gonna set my post, the bottom of each post, I'm gonna push out just a little bit and step it into the ground. I got to my last post here and I have some slack, so I'm gonna have to adjust this line back out. I'm gonna go ahead and secure my post though. One key to using electric netting fencing is that the grass has to be short under the fence. If I were to set my fencing up through this section back here, I would have to mow the last thing on the fence that you need to do is give your corners some support. Your corners will end up getting pulled in, so you wanna support them out. I'm gonna use a six foot steel T-post for this. And then I'm just gonna use a piece of non-conductive twine. This is polypropylene baling twine again to give that post a little bit of support. It does not take a lot. Uh, many people won't actually recognize electric netting as an electric fence. And while electric fences don't pose a serious threat to people, there have been a few instances of injury, especially with powerful fences. So it's a good idea just to warn people. All right, so the fence is up and it's time to get the charger. It's a good idea the first time you use your charger um, on any animals to make sure the battery is completely charged. This fence charger is from Premier One. It's a 0.5 joule charger. Now joule is one measurement of kind of the push of electricity. The joules of a charger tend to um, establish how much fencing you can charge. Now this charger, actually I would have to look it up. I think it can do about six sections of this fencing. So we could do a area about six times bigger. Look at this tiny ground rod. I know it doesn't seem like very much. You only need about three feet of ground rod per joule of charger, depending on the conditions. And our conditions here are about perfect for grounding because the ground always stays damp. Well, nearly always. 
This ground rod also acts as a stand for your charger to keep it from tipping over. In the winter, you pretty much want your charger facing due south and almost vertical. In the summer, because the sun's higher, you can actually set it um, tilted a little bit more, but still facing the south. You can also use this plastic stand to put your charger on a T-post. I kind of like that up there. So here's the grounding wire. Let's attach that to the charger. And the hot wire is just the same. Now the ground wire clamps onto the grounding rod. I don't know though, I think I'm gonna wire that on there so it doesn't get knocked off. Okay, there it is, it's wired on. There's no way that can get knocked off. The clip to charge the fence is supposed to clip on to a metal tag all the way at the end of the fence down there, but that end of the fence is totally in the shade from the barn for most of the day. Here's the clip. Um, both for attaching two sections of fencing and for attaching the charger to. So I have to charge this fence from the middle of the fencing, so this may be the only thing that wouldn't be Premier One approved, but it'll work. I've wrapped wire around these conductive wires. This is electric fencing wire. It runs around this one, this one, this one, about four of them. And I'm going to clip my hot into that. All right, we should be ready to test it out. We'll turn it on. With this charger, what you wanna see is a constant flashing green light. If the light is ever flashing red and green, it means you need to take the fence inside and charge it to keep the battery in shape and to keep your animals in. Always check your fence with a charge tester. 8,000 volts. Could that be right? Yeah, I think so. This is a wireless fence tester. There's no ground and you don't even have to touch the fence. And yes, it uh, really works. 8,000, 8,000. Wow, that fence is hot. You don't want to touch that fence. Don't mess with it, don't pee on it, don't play with it. Um, even though it's only a 0.5 joule output, that just means you can't fence you know, 50 miles of fencing with it, but you can still get a really high level of control on a smaller fence, and that's exactly what we've got right here. It started raining, so I stepped into the barn. I just wanted to say that if you are considering homesteading, or if you have a little homestead, and maybe you wanna add another animal you don't have fencing for yet, or maybe you want to do aggressive rotational grazing, then you should consider portable electric fences. You know, I really want a permanent perimeter fence around our place, but I'm actually considering using these fences for a year until we figure out exactly where we want our permanent fences. These fences open up a ton of opportunities. You could use these fences um, on a neighboring piece of property, say you work out a lease agreement for two years, you could raise steers and you could rotate them through. That would be very, very low startup costs, and it would be a way that you could start um, into agriculture, that you could start into homesteading. You don't have to own a bunch of land. There's land out there in most rural and kind of semi-rural areas in the country. There's a lot of land available. We will introduce the goats to the fence tomorrow, and we'll tell you how to do that safely, and uh, teach the goats to respect your fences. Y'all have a great day. That was another great day on the homestead.